Hey, hey guys, Adam here with another educational video. In this video, we shall present and define the concept of linear energy retention, how to measure it, and what aircraft characteristics give an aircraft good LER. Without further ado, let's head straight into it. Energy retention is a measure of an aircraft's ability to retain energy, such as speed and altitude. There's two categories of energy retention. Maneuvering energy retention, which is the energy retention when turning, and linear energy retention, which is the energy retention when going in a straight line. Turning is very different from going in a straight line and uses different aircraft characteristics. And often an aircraft with good MER doesn't have good LER and vice versa. That's why you need two different metrics to adequately measure an aircraft's energy retention in these two different situations. I'll measure the LER of an aircraft by calculating how high its deceleration is at a certain high speed that is above its top speed. To adequately compare aircraft, this somewhat arbitrary high speed must be faster than the top speed of every prop, but also low enough that you still reach that speed relatively often. The speed must be the same for all aircraft being compared as well, of course. I chose 700 kilometers per hour as a nice round number. Now comes my quiz for you guys. What aircraft characteristics affect an aircraft's deceleration at high speed? In other words, what aspects of an aircraft would give it good LER? It should be aspects like drag, wing area, you get the idea. Pause the video and take a minute to write down in the comments what you think it's relatively straight forward. Let's present the type of graph and the aircraft that will be compared in this video. The graph shows the acceleration, or rather deceleration, of the aircraft at 700 km per hour at sea level on the vertical axis as a function of an aircraft characteristic on the horizontal axis. The higher the acceleration, the better the aircraft will retain energy in a straight line. The goal is to find the aircraft characteristics that correlate well with acceleration. For example, this characteristic correlates very well with acceleration since the aircraft form a straight line from the worst to the best LAR aircraft. The seven aircraft present in this graph and ordered from highest acceleration to lowest acceleration are the P-51H at minus 0.2 meters per second squared, Tempest Mark II, P-59, P-51D30, Spitfire Mark 24, BF-09K4, and A7M2 at minus 1.9 meters per second squared. I chose tier 4 aircraft with relatively different designs and characteristics to get a nice comparison. The accelerations are calculated by using the aircraft coefficients in the flight model data files. Before we get into the graphs, I'll explain what flat plate drag area is since that's the metric used to compare drag between aircraft. The flat plate drag area of an aircraft is the amount of area that will produce the same amount of drag as the aircraft going at the same speed. It's equal to the zero lift drag coefficient times the wing area. The first graph shows the acceleration as a function of drag area. Intuitively, we'd think that the bigger the drag area, the worse the acceleration will be and the lower the LER will be. Indeed, there seems to be a decent correlation between a lower drag area and a higher acceleration, with the P-59 as an outlier, which will be explained later. If you wrote down drag, you get one point. However, there's a better characteristic than simply drag. Acceleration is not only proportional to drag, but also to mass or weight, following F equal MA. By making the acceleration graph as a function of the weight to drag ratio instead, we get a tighter distribution and a better correlation with acceleration. Ratios are what's important for aircraft performance, not simply power, weight, and drag. You get one point for drag, one point for mass or weight, but three points if you listed the weight to drag ratio. Next up is acceleration as a function of power. Once again, intuitively we think that the higher the power, the higher the acceleration and LER will be. However, on this graph there's no clear correlation between power and acceleration. How is that possible? It's because you need to be looking for a ratio. You can easily have an aircraft with a lot of power but also a lot of drag, like bombers for example. By replacing power by the power to drag area ratio, we get a very tight distribution and a very good correlation with acceleration. And all the aircraft, including the P-59, are in a straight line. 
The high power at high speed of the P-59's turbojets compensates for its high drag. You get 1 point for power, but 3 points if you listed the power to drag ratio. Let's take a look at the relationship between acceleration and wing loading, which is the mass of the aircraft divided by its wing area, which is a strong predictor of turn performance. There does seem to be a tendency for better LER aircraft to have a higher wing loading, but LER is not directly related to wing loading. It's more that fast aircraft tend to have higher wing loadings. Correlation doesn't mean causation in this case. You do not get any points for wing loading. The aircraft characteristic that is most strongly correlated with acceleration is the one that was in the very first graph presented in this video, which you see again now. Can you guess what it is? It's as simple as the top speed of the aircraft. Logically, the higher the top speed, the closer it is to 700 km per hour, and the closer the acceleration will be to zero. Higher top speeds are also achieved with a high power to drag ratio, which also showed a strong correlation with acceleration. Top speed is a convenient and easy way to compare LER. Some aircraft that achieve their high speed mainly through low drag, like the P51D30, will have a bit better LER than you'd expect from the top speed alone, but it's not a big difference. LER is useful because it shows how much more energy an aircraft conserves than another one when at high speed. For example, the P51H, with its acceleration of minus 0.2 meters per second squared, will lose 4 times less energy per second at 700 km per hour than the Spitfire Mark 24 at the same speed with its minus 0.8 meters per second squared. 4 times is a massive difference when a climb advantage of 1.1 times is significant. However, the drawback is that you don't often get enemies that will follow you for long periods of time at these speeds. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content, and stay useful!